Are you thinking about making a move to Portland and you're doing your homework and thinking about making a move to the Lake Oswego area of the Portland metro area? Well, in today's video, we are gonna talk all about Lake Oswego, the things you're gonna to need to know. And if you stick around till the end, we're gonna talk about four distinct properties that you can consider as a relatively normal property that a lot of people tend to buy here. So we're getting after it right now. first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living in the greater Portland metro area or Lake Oswego, then make sure you click that subscribe button, tap that notification bell, do a little dance, and that way you will be the first person to know about everything happening in our great market. I'm Ann Stewart. This is Erica Hagfurst. We're your go-to gals if you're making that move, like Erica said. All of our contact information is in Hello. the description below, and you guys are really good about reaching out to us on text or email or hit us up anyway and we'll jump on a call together or zoom and help you make a smooth move to the portland metro area all right so we are in the beautiful lake oswego area today i mean it's absolutely gorgeous as you're gonna see as we go throughout this video but there was a time when lake oswego was actually known as oswego and was kind of considered out in the boondocks it was only <laughs> accessible by boat or railroad and it wasn't until the Oregon Iron and Steel companies, like that market started going down in the early 1900s, that they started focusing on residential development. And, you know, not to bore you with the complete and utter history of <laughs> Lake Oswego, but it didn't actually become Lake Oswego until like the 60s. Wow. I know, it's, it was known as Oswego and it was developed and it wasn't until like the 40s and 50s when they really started developing around the lake and those properties started being built, which you can see in a lot of these lake homes. They are older properties mm -hmm. that have been lovingly rehabbed, and we will talk about those at the end of the video. But Lake Oswego is known as kind of an exclusive area. Yeah. And what you will find is it has great schools. It has a beautiful setting. There are still yeah. a lot of, I think what's so cool about Lake Oswego is there's not a lot of buildability here mm -hmm. anymore. They really did focus on developing it back in the day but they left a lot of trees they left a lot of natural setting there's obviously the man-made lake which is managed and we'll talk about that as well a little bit later but they really focus on maintaining this like small town charm mm -hmm. the the downtown areas which we'll get into in a little bit there's a couple of distinct options there but they really focus on walkability and so you do feel like you step back in time a little bit when it comes to lake oswego you you feel like you're in a small you know I don't want to say country, but you feel like you're in a small town and mm -hmm. it's just really refreshing. And they focus on the beauty of the city and keeping everything looking very lovely so that you can want to be outside. There's lots of walking trails, lots of parks, lots of artwork, lots of artwork. Yeah. I mean, they've really made it quite a masterpiece and very friendly to the eye. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this isn't something that's been overtaken with modern day architecture. You still have a lot of character and uh, that is something that's definitely focused on when they go through the building process here in like a we go so um, I'm excited to jump in this is gonna be a fun video because there's it's such a cool area to talk about yeah. and to be in and and people find that you know they're like it's just such a cool place to be even though it's very expensive <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's, that's not, why that's well, why it's so expensive it's also, yeah I mean it's just such a it's such a great little like haven that yeah. we have here and you're not in the city but you're so close to being able to get into the city I mean it's maybe 10 minutes yeah and so um, yeah it'll be exciting we'll, we'll Love to hear what you guys have to say about it. So let's talk about the location of Lake Oswego. As Erica mentioned, it is a great city for a lot of reasons, but the location really is a key one because it's only about seven miles from downtown Portland and you can get there via Highway 43, which goes from Lake Oswego down to downtown Portland, or you mm -hmm. can hop on the freeway system. So it's really close to the I-5 217 interchange. So it makes it easy to get down to downtown Portland pretty fast. And it's got the Willamette River that runs along it. You also have several cities that kind of butt up against it. You've got obviously its sister city, West Lynn. You've got Tigard. You've got Tualatin. You've got parts of Southwest Portland. And it does sit in Clackamas County. The bulk of Lake Oswego is Clackamas County. However, there are some small, small areas of Lake Oswego that are considered Multnomah or Washington County. Mm -hmm. So it's just really important to know that the bulk of it's Clackamas, but if you are gonna buy here, depending on where you buy, you may wanna just double check your 
tax situation yeah. because a lot very of people important. very important because a lot of people don't want those Multnomah County taxes no. as we talked about. So. No, 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 no. And and it you know also can play into effect when you're looking to permit things for mm -hmm. you know renovation all that kind of stuff so definitely make sure you know where you're where Excellent you're buying point. in Lake Oswego. Now you can also get to the east side rather quickly because mm -hmm. you're on Highway 43 so you can hop over to Selwood from here pretty fast off Highway 43. Um, like we mentioned, you can go up uh, Highway 43 to West Lynn and go all the way down to the 205. So locationally, it's kind of centered pretty well in the yeah. uh, Portland area, even though it is the west side of town. Um, so location is a biggie for a lot of people who are looking to be kind of central. And it's also a big city, even though it's a little state. There's only about 40,000 people, give or take, that live in Lake Oswego. And it's, you know, going from one side of Lake Oswego to the other could actually take you about 20 minutes. Because <laughs> you have to go around the lake. It's kind of crazy. It's not that big, but yeah. you do have to go around the lake. And I mean, the, the roads here are a little funny. We, yeah. we kind of joke. I mean, it's it's <laughs> the most like affluent neighborhood that we have, but yeah. yet it, uh, it has kind of terrible roads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and there's so many neighborhoods, Twisty, right? Twisty, turny, there's 25, yeah. 20, 25, neighborhoods distinct neighborhoods that all have like you know are registered with the city all right so let's talk about the downtown area slash areas lake Oswego does have two fairly distinct downtown areas but let's talk about first edition first so <laughs> first edition was kind of one of the original areas meant to be walkable it was developed obviously by oregon iron and steel and it has maintained that like kind of trait to it that's what it's known for and that's what people love about it so you have high-end restaurants and wineries like domain serene and you've got five spice seafood you've got uh, lots of bakeries all sorts of restaurants desserts area salt and straws here um, but this is kind of the heart of of Lake Oswego. Yeah. I think when most people think downtown, this is where they're thinking. And it really does, I mean, as you can see behind us, they do beautiful flowers. They really try to make it eye candy area. Yeah. Well maintained. Um, very really well maintained. They're out here all the time, making sure that it's beautiful, it's mm -hmm. safe, it's walkable. And First Edition is also known for having these lovely higher end homes. Now you're not generally getting a lot of yard with homes in First Edition but they're gonna be very walkable. And with, there's so many parks that you don't really need it to be. Mm -hmm. But you know, when it comes to the downtown area, you've got tons of like boutique-y little shops, you've got spas, you've got, you know, everything that you can possibly think of. There's Whole Food, there's Safeway. It's every, you know, you've got your hair salon. You've got the old school it cinema. Is, yeah, there's a great the cinema lake. here on the lake that you can, you know, get food and, adult beverage and then sit and watch a movie or you can just sit outside if you want. They really um, do take to the idea, even though our summer season can be a little bit short sometimes um, and the time that you want to spend actually outside eating. And we do have a lot of options when it comes to being able to sit outside, enjoy the beauty of the area. And they take this very seriously here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, even on the main street. So it's kind of bordered by letters and numbers. If you think first through 10th, and A through G. That is that is the grid that makes up like, you know, first edition in downtown like this we go. And they just, you know, A Street is kind of the main drag through the city and it's beautiful. It's split. It's got lots of trees. It's got flowers everywhere. They refresh these things. It never looks dull. Mm -hmm. um, and then during the holidays, they really do it up. They make it very festive. They want you to feel the, the season. They have a lot of, they have farmer's markets. They have Great farmers market. um, art shows or art uh, like festivals. They take everything very seriously here, just as they would in a small community. But it is like Anne said, you know, you're about 40,000 people, which isn't tiny. Right. And so it's just such a cool downtown space because you, you know, you get kind of the cool parts of, of Portland right here in a very like close knit walkable, friendly community. So Erica, tell us about another area that kind of has a downtown vibe to it in Lake Oswego. Yeah, so the other, what we would call almost a second downtown area is right off of Booms Ferry. And it's in the Lake Grove area. Again, you've got a lot of really nice restaurants. What's it? You love an Italian restaurant over there, right? Oh yeah, it's um, Ricardo's, which is yeah. right off the main drag heading into that Lake Grove area. And again, you know, they've got wineries, they've got, you know, breakfast bakeries. Baba Cahan. Yes, I love Baba Cahan. So, so fantastic. 
Exactly. Yeah. And so it's again, a lot of like little cute boutiques. Um, it's a little bit more modern over there and they've done a big restoration project through that downtown area mm -hmm. to make it more walkable. And I'll say biker, people friendly versus car friendly. Um, but they have a, a zoo pans. It would be kind of, it's almost, you know, your interior downtown. And it's, you know, obviously closer to I-5, it's on the opposite side of the lake. Mm -hmm. It's just a different area. But again, it speaks to the friendliness of like Oswego in the sense that like, you have all these different neighborhoods. So 20 plus neighborhoods that all have their distinct regions. And then you have these multiple downtown areas to, to service all of their needs. Um, there's also kind of the south side of the lake, there's a new seasons over there and little shopping centers like spattered all over the, the neighborhoods. But those would be your two downtown areas. First edition being the main one, but Lake Grove area being a strong second. And you know, you're not gonna go wrong being in either or close to either. Lots of amenities anyway. Oh yeah. Live. Okay, one of the things we have to talk about is schools. Now as realtors, we have to be careful to talk about schools, but it doesn't take much to realize as you go online looking that Lake Oswego is the number one public school district no, no, no. in the state of Oregon. If you go to niche.com, it gets an A plus. That is a big deal for a public school. So why are so many people moving or have moved to Lake Oswego in all the years? It's because in large part to the schools. We've got two high schools. We've got Lake Ridge and Lake Oswego. We've got six elementary schools and two middle schools. So there is a lot of schools in and for all of them to get such high ratings, they get a lot of ratings to be one of the number one to work at as a school teacher to get funded. Uh, there's just a big emphasis on how good the school districts are. And a lot of times in real estate, you're following the schools. If they're good yeah. schools, that usually means prices are stable and always improving yep. and going up. Uh, when the market takes a dip, these areas tend to not feel it quite as much because people want it. And like Erica had mentioned earlier in the video, we don't have a lot of land here. They're not building subdivisions. It's really difficult to find lots to even build on. A lot of the developers and builders in the area are swooping in and grabbing those before anybody else can. So it's not a place that you can just go buy new construction or get newer inventory. Mm -hmm. What we have is what we've got to, for the most part. So when people buy in here, they realize really quickly that they might be paying a lot for the house, but they're not having to pay for a, a private school. These are yeah. just as good in many cases as private schools, but do your own homework. Uh, go to, you know, schooldigger.com, niche.com, best places to live. You're going to find out really quickly that mm -hmm. they're just ra really rated very, very well, and you really can't go wrong. So if you're looking primarily at schools as a way to uh, buy into because you have a family or you just like to buy into places that have really good schools for the sake that it does preserve value, uh, then you can't go wrong with Lake Oswego by any stretch. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about demographics here in Lake Oswego. Mm -hmm. So to live comfortably, the statistics say yeah, that you have to make us. about $150,000. You've got to make a healthy income to live comfortably is what it mm -hmm. says. So 150,000 is a comfortable living here. The average rent is $3,750 per month. And guess how much the average or medium, I sh how medium else? sales price is right here <laughs> in, in like us we go. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> 1.495 million dollars so and just to get in and have an average home yeah you're looking at about 1.5 as we'll see when we get to the end here you know that's very much the average that's almost i would say entry level i think that yeah. they're i think they're including a lot in of some areas like, yeah uh the you know condos or apartment living uh that you can get into like as we go with because I would actually say it's probably a little, it feels a little bit higher if you're looking for a detached yeah. home. <laughs> well, and honestly, downtown here in Lake Oswego, you can get townhomes and condos, but they can be well over a million. They can oh, be yeah. one and a half million. Yeah. So can you find inventory, Erica, under a million? Oh, if you were looking 100%. at Lake Oswego, what does that inventory typically look like? It's going to be an older, like very like, not to be rude. It's just, it's not exciting. It's going to be your average home. Like you're going to look at it in anywhere else. It might like be a smaller home. Right? It's going to be a smaller home. It's not going to be updated. It's mm -hmm. not going to have a huge yard. It's not going to be any of those things when you start adding those features in that's when you start bumping up the price yeah um, and there's not a lot of neighborhoods that don't command a well over a million dollars here in lake oswego yeah, yeah you can find inventory but like erica said it's modest or it's a smaller home older fixers, like the, the heavy cosmetic fixers mm -hmm. you can start getting those and they're still think about like eight to nine hundred dollars eight hundred to a million um, in that range. And if you think about you being on the lake, minimally, you're probably $3 million. Minimally, yeah. I mean, and that's not getting you, again, that's not getting you something that's 100% updated. That's getting you something that's like, mm -hmm. you know, 
a fixer or it's small or you know something like that so the price points i think there's stuff on the on the lake up to like 10 million mm -hmm. you know 10 11 i mean so just know that that's a pretty wide range but i generally think you know if you're looking for something pretty like a little bit more, more show stopping you're usually mid shoes to four five six whatever you want to be yeah and you know a lot of people come from out of state mm -hmm. to buy in this area especially that come from you know areas where they're unlocking a lot of equity in their own homes or yeah. higher price points and so they're used to paying higher price points and this is where they put their money and invest in and we're seeing a lot of that happen more and more in lake oswego and as i mentioned there's just not a lot of new construction happening and typically new construction you're easily paying three to five million to yeah. get something brand new because you know with the with what land or new construction in the lake oswego area it's usually a builder going in and buying something that's fairly derelict or that needs a heavy update and they just tear it down so you have to factor in the cost of the lands are very expensive because they probably bought it with a house on it they mm -hmm. had to tear it down and then they're going to build something that they know can command the prices that they want right. to get so that they can they can make everything work for them um so you're a lot of times getting i'm going to say a custom spec home but a, to some degree a spec home that's built by a custom type builder and, and, if, and if you have questions about what can you get for the money or yeah. whatever, reach out to us because a lot of times we help people understand what can you get here mm -hmm. for that. You can get new construction, but in those price points. And if you're flexible on what you are comfortable, like want to live in, if you're like, I can do a townhouse or I can do this, then yeah, you can generally bring that price point down with which you can get into Lake Oswego. For some mm -hmm. people, it's just being able to say that they're like Lake Oswego so they can get into the school districts. And there are things that you can do to get into the neighborhood but you're not going to be in the 3000 square foot, like single family home, yeah. you know, with a third of an acre. Yeah. Those are, you know, minimally about one and three quarters on up. Now you so, can look in mountain park, which is mm -hmm. a Lake Oswego address, but it kind of butts up against Southwest Portland. So you just have to be aware some of the addresses over there can start turning into Portland. Yeah. Um, and but, there's an H there's a couple of HOAs that you generally have yep. to join over there to go along. Now you do get some amenities, but it's a different feel over there a little bit. Um, you're on the other side of Boone's Ferry. A lot of trees. Tons Very trees. of trees, which, you know, is great. People love it, but it also means a lot more home maintenance. But there's condos up there, townhomes, mm -hmm. single family homes. You can actually get some good inventory at a million or just a little bit over if it's yeah. updated. Um, so you're not breaking the bank on Mountain Park. Mm -hmm. um, it's not lake property values. You're not in downtown Lake Oswego. You're a little bit further on the other side, close closer to Southwest Portland, but you can get a lot more bang for your buck over there. Yeah. All right, so something that always comes up uh, when you're talking about Lake Oswego are easements. Lake easements. Lake easements. And so there's, a, you know, everybody wants to be able to access the lake. And sometimes some homes in Lake Oswego actually have access to it, even if they're not a lakefront property. Right. So what does that look like? Lake Oswego Corporation, which manages the lake, they own 20 properties that allow residents if they so if it's so deeded to their property to go and use the lake mm -hmm. um obviously it's another pay or fee that you have to pay to be a member so your house may have an easement you can opt not to participate in that easement but it's most a people, big deal if you have an easement it's a big deal if you have an easement for marketing purposes so yep there's 20 like i said there's 20 different properties so 20 different easements only 3,000 homes in the lake oswego area have these easements attached to them. Now, some houses actually have multiple. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll see like two lake easements or three lake easements. And so that becomes a big deal. You kind of pay for that. And then you have to decide from there which easements you're going to actually join and use, which make the most sense for you. Um, and they all have their own you know, specifications um, and fees. So take that into mind. And you can punch in on their, their website your address to see if maybe you have one and maybe you just didn't know about it. The other thing that Lake Oswego has is they have two swim parks. Mm -hmm. Now there's the Lake Grove Swim Park, which is managed by the Lake Oswego School District. And so you're eligible if you're in that in the school district and or a family member. And then there's also, I'm totally blanking on the name of it, there is another swim access and that one is managed by the Parks and Rec. So tons of options to enjoy swimming in the summer, the lake, even if you don't have an easement or if you do have an easement. Mm -hmm. And just know that there are fees, there are boats uh, are accessible on the lake, so you will pay extra. And it is very managed. I mean, this is a man-made And lake. there's lots of waiting lists for the There are lots of waiting lists for the mortgages. Yep. mortgages. There's lots of rules and regulations, so make sure that you understand everything. Mm -hmm. But if 
having like access is important to you, but you're like, I just don't know if I can, you know, fork over three and a half million plus to be on the lake. There are still a lot of options. You would want to then look at something that has a lake easement. And because you stuck around to the end, we're gonna talk about four properties that are typical to what you can expect at different price ranges here in the Lake As We Go area. Erica, why don't you share with us what you found out? All right, so property number one is located in the coveted Palisades neighborhood. This is a four bedroom, two and a half bath, 2,128 square feet home. It was completely remodeled six years ago, including new roof and systems. That's actually pretty awesome. So you know everything's only six years old and you can move forward and you've got a fairly updated house. Now it's not huge. And the price point on this is $899,900. So originally built in 1977, lovingly updated and maintained over the years. But that's a, that's a pretty, like for that size of home, that's a pretty good price point actually in Palisades. And this is on a pretty decent sized lot. I think you're looking at right around plus or minus a quarter acre land. So good sized lot and an updated home that's got four bedrooms, two and a half baths, 900,000, that's a bargain. All right, Erica, tell us about house number two. Yeah, so this house is really cool. It's on the Lakewood Peninsula. So it's a three bedroom, two bath, 2,213 square foot home on just under a quarter acre. This one's coming in at 1.5999. Right at that average sales yeah. price. <laughs> yeah, so again, you know, similar size to house number one, but your location has increased your, or your location has a little bit more value to it. And it's a beautiful home. It was originally built in 1956. It's been updated. It's quite stunning on the inside. Lots of cool angles, a little bit of a mid-century modern vibe to it. And again, you're right in the heart. I mean, you're walking distance to first edition. And like we talked about, that's really like a cool place to be. Now it's a little bit of a walk because you have to go down the peninsula and around, but still super fantastic location, not a huge house but you've got you know an attached garage you've got a lot of really cool setting old established on a nice landscaping quarter acre yard almost and on almost a quarter acre so i think that this is actually a bargain at 1.6. all right erica tell us about house number three on the lake on the lake so this is where we are moving as i mentioned earlier in the video once you start getting to lakefront living it it bumps up the price so this one's listed at 3.25 million it's a three bedroom three and a half bath almost 5400 square feet on just under a fifth of an acre and it's got 180 degree views of like Oswego. You're in a cul-de-sac. You've got an elevator. <laughs> so, um, you know, lots of really cool things like a sauna, an interior workshop, oversized three car garage and a boat lift. It's an amazing house. It's not an overly updated house for that price. You're paying for location in that $3.25 million. So this is actually kind of a steal in the sense that like somebody's gonna have to come in and update it and, and bring it to, you know, modern times. Now it's not like it's ancient. It was built in 1999, but we've, we've changed a lot in our styling in the last 25 years. So that's why it's priced where it's at. It's not an overly large lot either to be on the lake but you are on the lake, you've got amazing views. So if you're looking to come in and be there and you want a project, this is a great option. Okay, Erica, tell us about house number four. <laughs> house number four is kind of the creme de la creme. So this is a newer construction. It was built in 2023. It's a five bedroom, five and a half bath, 6,500 plus square foot home on just under half an acre. This is in the Forest Highlands neighbor, which is kind of like Northwest of first edition. It's a very upscale area. I would find that there's, there's a little bit more new construction or, you know, teardowns have happened and they've built some gorgeous homes in this area. So lots of high-end homes. It's got a three car garage, but it's huge. And this is what you're kind of finding that builders are building right now. Wouldn't you agree, Ann? Yep. So, you know, this is what they can get, especially off of almost half an acre. They're gonna put on big homes so that they can maximize their money. And it's gorgeous though. It's, it's everything that you want it to be. Absolutely beautiful styling and building of the home, but just know that that's, a, that's very normal. You do get a big yard, a pool, a hot tub, and a water feature. I mean, what more do you want? And then you've got schools. 
Thanks for joining us today as we talked all about living in Lake Oswego. We gave you a lot of information. Mm -hmm. If you guys have other questions or you want to drop a comment below or you're looking to move to this area, reach out to us. Let's get on a phone call and go through your needs and all that. And we love sharing all of our information we can on these neighborhoods for you. So we look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Bye, Bye guys.